Welcome to Every Album Ever with Mike and Alex. My name is Michael Mansour. I'm joined, as always, by my On the Road to Recovery co-host, Alexander Volt. Say hello. Yeah, I eat things. I eat things like food. This is Every Album Ever, the podcast where we listen to every single album in the world, one artist at a time. That is a new discography, more or less, per episode. And today we are discussing the butthole surfers. The excitement that I have for this. There are no words. There are no words. And it has no bounds. Alex, I'm excited for this. God damn it. I've been I, wanting to talk about this band for a long time. I was a little worried, but uh, through the course of things, I got real excited about it. And I didn't even realize I was familiar with a few songs. So, so you, this is brand new for you. Yes, I believe uh, I may have heard Locus Abortion Technician, techni- or technician yeah. a few times back in the day. It uh, didn't do much for me back in the day, but we'll get into it. We'll get uh, into it now. Before we talk about any of that, if you want to support us, and I know you do, please tell me you want to support us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, you know, all the, the stuff. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. Please tell a friend uh, or not. Uh, you could also follow me on Instagram at Pope Jesse Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. Every week we post uh, the artists that we are currently covering. Uh, so you can send emails, you know, DMs. You know, everything regarding that artist, favorite albums, uh, worst albums, general thoughts, all that good stuff. You could also email us your suggestions for artists you want us to cover. You can send all of that to every album ever at gmail.com. And as always, there will be a Spotify playlist on the Butthole Surfers. Uh, just like every other episode, we have a Spotify playlist for every single band artist that we cover. There should be a link in the description of wherever you're listening or watching. Please do that. Or you can also just turn this off right now and go talk to your family. But Or be like our friend in the UK, Sam, and just uh, message us about how uh, we turned you on to some cool shit. Like- please send us validation. <laughs> We need it. We're not getting it in our lives. It's been a long, long year. It feels good. We're definitely not getting it from ladies, right? In our like, not about the podcast. It's like in our personal lives. Dude, so. you have no idea. I've, I've gone through some shit in the past week, but <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man. Uh, but all surfers. Uh, so I'm extremely surprised that you're you weren't already a fan because the. The way, because in my head, yeah. Not only did I think you were a fan, I thought it's why we're friends. Yeah, like I, based on what else other music gets me excited, I seem like a butthole surfers type of guy. I've even seen them live. You saw them live, but I might kill you, Alex. I wasn't familiar with them, and it just felt like I was being bombarded with a wall of sound. Although they did one of the funniest things ever, and I think it was pissing people off. Before they played, they played the walk on up music from The Price is Right, but, but for like 20 minutes oh, until they came on stage. Fucking hilarious. At, and you could feel like the room turning. Actually, uh, the only other time that I, I've seen that at a show was of the shirt that I'm wearing. Tomahawk. Uh, yeah. Mike Patton's uh, band with uh, I'm an oh, what's this fucking Mike- from the Jesus Lizard. It's That's, Mike Patton. Band. It's the Jesus Lizard guys <laughs> band, though. I'm so mad that I forgot his name. Dwayne Dennison. Okay. Dwayne Dennison from the Jesus Lizard. It's basically his band, and he got Mike Patton, and Mike Patton made it his thing, because mm-hmm. that's what he does. I love Mike Patton, but he does that. Um, it was at that show where I got this shirt that I'm wearing, and before they went up, I don't know what it's from, but it's one of those, let's uh, play this as we enter battle. with fucking horns and uh, kettle drums and it went on for like a a good 30 (laughs) minutes and so it was it was a very wonderful experiment and watching how people react to stuff like that because you see the crowd like ignoring it for Mm. for a few minutes and then you you see when they start to notice it and they're like what the fuck like this is annoying and you see them getting annoyed right that always i always find it interesting when you go or when uh, you go to watch a weird band, but the audience is not down for weird stuff. Yeah, that's that's uh, Mike Patton fans to a T. But like, so they're getting annoyed by it. And then the longer it goes on, you see the more, uh, let's just say inebriated fans start to like bob their head, like getting into it. Nice. Like these idiots are fucking convincing themselves that they like this bullshit. And then it goes on even longer and people just tune the fuck out. Yeah. So it's like this weird natural progression of showing something 
uh, so annoying to someone for so long uh, how humans adapt. But bottle servers are amazing. Uh, no, the reason why I said that I thought it was why we're friends because the night that I met you yeah. at a Halloween party where you were dressed as James, James Franco and Spring Breakers, yeah. uh, another buddy of ours, Dylan, uh, he was dressed as Kurt Russell from Big Trouble Little China. Already I knew I was like, there's something here. Yeah. There's something here. <laughs> It was Dylan who who made a butthole surfers reference, and I was like, "This guy's my friend." Oh yeah, this D- guy's my friend. Dylan's uh, down with. Uh, I don't want to say obscure, but he's down with a lot of different music. Yeah. We've uh, we've tried to bring him on the the podcast, and he's uh, he's a busy, hardworking. He's a busy boy. boy. He's a busy so boy. This, uh, but Dylan is like, I feel um, in his heart of hearts, and even though he grew up uh, a rockabilly kid, like weird alt rock is his thing he's got great taste and also you got to be a little fucked up in the head to uh bring up the butthole surfers in your first conversation with a complete stranger yeah that takes weird balls yeah not just ballsy balls just i don't care if i lose this person forever kind of balls yeah yeah because i i would not do that typically but uh yeah you would think i like the melvins i like mike Patton stuff uh, obviously I should like the butthole surfers. I'm late to the party, but, but uh, I'm, I'm here now. I'm excited for this. And here's, here's another, uh, caveat, I guess you could say is that this is a band that I think has a high likelihood of releasing another album. However, they, it's been, it's, it sounds pretty low actually. Nowadays it's back to being low. So the last album, so the first album came out, I'll do the, I'll do the overview right now. Okay. There are, um, Eight albums and one EP. There's there's multiple EPs, but we're talking about the the, the big EP, the most important mm-hmm. EP. So uh, first EP came out in 1983. Uh, last album came out 2001. So 2001 is a long fucking time ago. Yes. But as recently... Almost 20. Almost 20. And then as recently as 2017, I believe, Paul Leary uh, said, yeah, I think, we, I think we need to do this. I think we need to do another record. And then Gibby, I think... Paul Leary is a guitar player. Gibby Haynes is the singer uh, and also a multi-instrumentalist. And they were saying like, yeah, actually, we already started talking. We already started working on stuff and writing stuff. And then the last thing was, I think, in 2017, they said it should be out next summer. And well, there's been no updates since. Yeah. So I feel like I think we need to talk about this band. I'm not going to wait for another album. If it comes out, we'll talk about it whenever it comes out. But mm-hmm. let's let's talk about this very fucking amazing and strange and completely unique band uh like we said eight albums first one 1983 uh they were uh around the time of the hardcore punk scene but not involved musically no they were involved musically with no one no one no one they are a uh, a gumbo you take uh you take some texas stuff take some old time rock and roll yep you take some Latin music, you take Jimi Hendrix and a mentally ill homeless person, <laughs> and then you get the butthole surfers. And so, that's what they sound like to me. Hell yeah. So we are going to talk about all of it. And I'm worried about where we're going to disagree because I, I'm not. I, I feel like it's hard to disagree on a band like this. If you enjoy this band, it's hard to disagree on this band. I think we'll have some more things in common yeah. than you think. I, I came out a, a slightly different with opinions this time around uh, because I've grown as an individual. I've mm-hmm. become far more mentally ill and fucked up over the years. So I, I enjoy things way more now than I thought uh, I would going in. But let's start now. Uh, already out of the gate. Confusing. Because the first EP is technically self-titled however it is also known as brown reason to live and it is also known as pp the sailor so you know what we're getting into this is uh the first cp 1983 there's a time to fuck and a time to cry but the saw sleeps in lee harvey's grave Already, already mentally ill person. Already. So this sounds like the most chaotic hardcore ever made. Do not get used to it. No. Do not get used to it. I can't wait for my favorite lyric in this song. Jimmy Hendrix makes love to Marilyn's 
the next one. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is the whole song. It is the whole song. Because of course, because this is the butthole surfers. Uh, just to, just for uh, the listener, I want you to put on the next track because this is what comes on immediately after. This is actually a, kind of a normal song. It's fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. But then you got the weird vocals. Weird vocals, but it kind of compensates. Yeah. The, the music is so fucking well done. And listen to that production. It sounds great. It's w- it's way better than uh, the White Zombies from last week. So, I love this EP. I really love this EP. I remember it uh, as a kid. I grew up with Butthole Surfers quite a bit. But um, I never really listened to like this EP or the early albums in their entirety. Uh, I got around to some of the, the mid mid period albums as a mm-hmm. teenager, but you know, this, I forgot about all these songs. So hearing that song with the second song we put on, Hey, Oh, I fucking, it's, I love it so much. I love it so damn much. That kind of made me relax a little because I thought this was going to be abrasive. It's early in the band's career. Yep. Um, I know what's on the horizon. That first song. Yeah. I was like, here we go. And then, so, hey, kind of was like, I'm going to be all right. Going to be all right. I can make it through this in a reasonable amount of time. Oh, even sure. if Mike doesn't, I, I, can, I can do it. I postponed <laughs> twice. All right. Listen, I have a lot going on in my life. It's not true. I just, I just took forever. Uh, the uh, originally, the, the center of the record uh-huh. told uh, listen, listeners to listen to this at uh, 69 RPMs. Very nice. cute. Very cute. Also, nice. the cover is uh it's horrific yeah it's wieners and gigantic bellies um so the, the 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 most flabbergasting thing about this record isn't that it's completely crazy which is completely fucking crazy it's how good it sounds compared to every other record from 1983 yes like yeah. where do they get the fucking funding for this and i kind of know it like wasn't it loaned to them by jello biafra and alternative tentacles uh yes and no they caught the eye of jello and he said if they could get a studio to agree to let them record mm-hmm. alternative tentacles would reimburse right. the label after it was put out right I think that would never fly in the million in a million years these days. These days now, and uh, that caused some issues for them on the uh, the following two albums yeah. with that stipulation. But um, it worked out. Uh, these albums sound far better than yeah. they have any right, any right. And it, like, it, we'll talk about it a, little, a little bit more later. But there's very minimal live footage of the band, but there is like solid like good quality live recordings of their of like the early years and uh you how they got any fan base is <laughs> astonishing and i think it's entirely based on how fucking just from a raw entertainment standpoint the live shows were because mm. uh if you were to hear these songs for the first time live the way they were back then there's you're not gaining like it sounds like a mess yeah um I this found this band so perplexing. I saw they had a DVD. I found it for five dollars. Then I showed Mike. I got it, and so he has it too. And if you watch that DVD, like look up like photos of Gibby. He looks fucking crazy, completely out of his mind. And then in between songs, I don't even want to call it an interview. That's that's where I got the like the interviewer asked him like, oh, what do, what do you guys like to eat? And he says, yeah, we like to eat. We eat things like food. Yeah, he, he well, he was completely I think he was on LSD. Or something. I think. Uh, Cause yeah, you, you, hear, you hear some of the incoherent rambling going on and I'm like, I hope he's not like that in real life. He's not. He's not. Okay, I've okay. seen, he, I remember a few years back, it was right after the death of, what's his name? Uris Youngus from Gore. What's his fucking uh, oh, name? Oh, I don't know his name. The but, main guy from uh, Gore when he died. Gibby went on the Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Yeah. And he was like completely coherent, nice guy. Oh, I need I'm, to look that well, up. Well, here's the thing. Uh, we didn't talk about their backstory. Uh, Paul Leary, guitar player. Okay. 
I'm getting ahead of myself. On this EP, it is a split down the middle of Paul Leary singing and Gibby singing. So the yes. first song, the screaming, all the, the the shouting, screaming, madness, that's Paul Leary. The silly, that's Gibby. Yeah. So they met in college, I believe, and they were just the most regular on the track. Oh, yeah. The most regular people. Gibby was an accountant, like a full on accountant. Yep. Hired as an accountant. Uh, and Paul Leary was pursuing his like an MBA or something like that. And I think Gibby was also a basketball player. Yes. Because he's a gigantic yes. man. Yes. He's a gigantic man. Even in that in that uh, interview yeah. where he's you know rambling like a madman, they're like all in bed together. Uh, like shirtless with like a blanket over them and he's just towering above these tiny little people like, and, the, and the hair makes it even more he, gnarly he it's like a really bad uh, old beehive type thing you know like aretha franklin type it's like that but uh unkempt it looks like it's full of him rodents. and uh king king buzzo taking the the crowns for craziest yeah hair and, it, uh, he looks like uh in the early days gibby looked like it was permanent bedhead like yeah. he just that's just what happens with long hair if you never ever do anything with it when you wake up but uh back to the music yeah yeah uh, i think something is good something's great love it it's the love child of king crimson and captain beefheart and i'm gonna bring up beef our old friend oh captain beefheart i'm gonna bring him up a lot here oh uh, uh, yeah and then of course barbecue pope barbecue pope that is a uh Fuck man, but that's Paul shouting on that one. Uh, put on a little bit of barbecue pope. So oh, there's so much good. This band has so many fucking good songs, man. Oh my god. And then Gibby plays some uh, saxophone. He does play saxophone on here. Also, this features a uh, rotating list of drummers. So. This one, yeah. But uh, can coffee would join and that's their king coffee would be the permanent drummer uh throughout a couple of years like the next album is or is it the one after i Wait think he joined like full time after i no, i mean like after this which when did he come on board oh yeah after this yeah yeah this riff is so fucking strong this album cover looks like the music's just gonna sound awful yeah they're good songwriters or, or ugly Some, yeah like ugly music there was some ugliness to it. Yeah, sure. But those are killer riffs, great songwriting, great performing. I shot the barbecue oh, I love this song so much. That's a great song. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, I uh, I remember uh, remember seeing this cover a lot more. Then I realized I I didn't realize I knew how I knew this record so well. I just mm. saw the cover a lot. Uh, I remember so much of this as a kid and how much I liked it even then, but just never kind of thought about or pursued it. Uh, even the even the bullshit songs like uh, which thought which talk cathedral. Mm -hmm. It's like a big band parody song. I even like that. Yeah. It's fucking so everything about it is so goddamn fun. Uh, Suicide I think is like the most traditional punk song. But even that, uh, I, I love it. I love it all. This is, it's crazier than shit, but surprising amount of melodies, great hooks, super short, really funny, like genuinely absurd, funny, surprisingly decent, uh, intro to the band. I think, uh, very surprising, very surprising, wonderful, great. Uh, listen to it. If you, I mean, like this is, a f it's not the best representation of the band but it's it's a very uh this a short like taste like if this rubs you the wrong way then, yeah it's probably this bail yeah because there are other entry points that are probably better uh and more accessible but this one this one gives you a little bit more crazy than some of the other stuff mm -hmm. uh yeah i recommend the fuck out of it but let us move on to the first actual album this is a uh, man. This this album <laughs> title is fucking remarkable. This is a uh, 1984's "Psychic Powerless," another man's sack. <laughs> Why? 
so this album is the the band attempting to be psychedelic which they flirt with they do throughout their career they sure do this is like the worst opening track it's not a good opener it is this it's a lot of this like if you were off put by that opening track in the last EP yeah I'm actually I'm actually gonna throw a different song on after this much like you did yeah because I feel like so you, there's so much going on so never judge a Bottle Surfers album by the first track ever or, or I would say even one track really yeah kind of Okay, so that's the opening track. So I'm going to throw on Dum Dum, because I think yes. that's it should have been the the opener. And now uh, we have two drummers. Yep, Teresa Taylor. To, uh, also known in the days, Teresa uh, Nervosa, Nervosa. Okay. Uh, and then you got the... Uh, I was listening to this, I'm like, yeah, it's like Black Sabbath's Children of the Grave. Yeah. And then I go on Wikipedia and some asshole wrote that. I was like, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Well, only I can know it's Children I mean, of the Grave. I mean, it sounds like Children of the Grave. It's pretty... Yeah. Yeah, a lot of galloping. It's more the drums, then. You want the people to be the people to want the people to love you. You need the people to show the facts instead of getting the charge. You want the people to be the people to And then this song, much like, hey, put me at ease. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. I felt... This band the more really I heard, good. yeah, yeah the, the better I felt about. They're really good was, at that. They're really good at like, all right, we're going to fuck you up. Just kidding. We, we're, we're st- we still make good music. Uh... Not that, the, not that the crazy stuff is bad, but I still like it a lot. Oh, yeah. No, I just thought it'd be more unrelenting. Yeah. And this is uh, my personal favorite. Personal favorite. Look at Alex. Yes. Look at Alex. Personal favorite. This is a wild album. This is a, uh, that's a great album. It's, it's a great album. I feel like it's not... It's kind of hard to pick an album that's representation of their sound. And, uh, yeah, each album's kind of its own thing. But yeah. this this had a lot of, a lot of songs I enjoyed. Um, like Eye of the Chicken is yeah. so crazy. Like his vocals sound like Steve Albini guitars. Yeah, like dude, Eye of the Chicken. So Eye of the Chicken is the second track. Yeah, and the fact that they opened the album with such two such abrasive <laughs> fucking songs. It's like I, I mean, it's totally representative of the whole punk, of the punk aesthetic, or them, or them, them yeah. and the like, especially in like. 84 the, these years it's like yeah fuck you i don't we don't care if you buy our records we're gonna do what we, we, we want to do we're gonna be as crazy and off-putting as wild and ridiculous as possible uh it's 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 cool it's it's cool and it, it's it's a fucking good album too like and then uh i would say uh negro observer is oh. like the most jello influenced vocal track dude gibby's voice is so wiggly it's so wiggly and also that introduces like Oh, we're just going to use a laugh track like an instrument. And that's something they do on other songs. These unconventional, like, bull. is it on this? So album? I was going to bring it up uh, a second ago. Uh, Lady Sniff <laughs> fucking. Oh, yeah. The spitting. He uses. Yeah. He uses. Like a, he spits. A hawk. He hawks a loogie rhythmically. That's. I've never heard that ever. And since <laughs> ever before. Yes. And then never, everything never since. Like. They, they uh the the first like artists that it was like noticeable to me where i realized they were like (laughs) using sounds in like harmony ways was Mm -hmm. odb he does like a lot of like oh oh, 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 oh." (laughs) yeah like like he's crazy he's just crazy and yeah not that he was the first to do it so like ever since i was younger noticed like odb using these unconventional ways in rap music. Yeah, let's just say vocal uh, techniques. Vocal techniques. <laughs> so yeah, the like the laugh tracks or hawking the loogie yeah. rhythmically, uh, I think is pretty neat. But another thing about Lady Sniff and how much I fucking love that song. It's not just him hawking the loogie that's it's fun. It's his just the voice he uses in the song. Put on a little bit of Lady Sniff. And before you before you play it, his voice, the way he's singing on it is, is fucking wild. But also that's not even a riff. It's not even a riff, <laughs> but it comes across as one because it there's a break in there where it's just the guitar, mm. and you hear what he's playing. It's fucking nonsense. Yeah, it's just, but it 
it, it works. It feels like a song. I, it, oh, God, I love this fucking band. This song feels like a parody of Texans to yeah. me. It's also very like That's neat. the riff by the way. Another reason you would think I like butthole surfers is like this is very primacy. Very primacy. Here it Bird is. noises. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Oh, I love it. This is a song for scumbags. It's so grimy. This is the most oily, fucking covered in mud song, dude. Yeah, this is like um. I like ZZ Top because they have like a sheen on them, but they're scumbags. You yeah. know, Lord take me downtown. I'm just looking for some touch. Oh goddamn right. Uh, they, and this is like, well, what if we did like a ZZ Top song, but we just like fully embraced? Yeah. The, 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 the dirt. And yeah. The, dirt. Uh, the song Butthole Surfer, real fun, real messy, real punky, uh, normal compared to shit like Lady Sniff. Um, I didn't care much for Cherub, at least this version of it. Cherub's like their most psychedelic yeah. song. Yeah, it's pretty oh, no. long. It's not that long is bad, but it, and it's it's actually kind of hypnotic, mm-hmm. but if you if you sit there trying to pay attention to it, it gets it gets it wears on me. Um, and I, and uh, by this album, another another important uh, progression. Gibby is taking over vocals full time. Oh yeah, uh, there's no more like Paul sings little bits on Mexican Caravan and Gary Floyd. Uh, one last fun fact: Gary Floyd. That is that was the lead singer of hardcore punk band The Dicks, also okay. from Texas. Uh, he was uh, a gigantic man, openly gay, very. Uh, bold <laughs> the dicks were fucking awesome They're good uh, good ass hardcore band um so i don't know the lyrics but obviously that song is about him and then uh before we move on i feel like cowboy bob is a epic song there's a lot of s- soundscapes going on there which one's that put on a little bit of that there's you know horns there's guitars there's some wacky vocals It's only three minutes, but it's very epic in my head. Mm. This is extremely accessible. I like, yeah. I, it gets weirder, but like, yeah. yeah, I love this. It reminds me of a uh, kraut or uh, Kraftwerk. What was that from their first album? God damn it! The first album, Kraftwerk One. Yeah, or I think it was just self-titled. Hold on. It had a, a silly German name. Oh yeah, all the the first like five albums had titles all in Hold German. Hold on, this is gonna bother me. I've done it many times. Take your time. Uh, I didn't like it as much Ru- as DP. It reminds me a lot of of a uh, rucksack. Ruck rucksack, rucksack. That's right. Uh, Craftwork episode forty. That is a lengthy episode. That was a good. One. It was very fun. Uh, most most of the bands I've I taught I. I love where we're at as a podcast because most bands I reference to, we've covered. We've covered, them. yeah, in extreme detail. Yeah, <laughs> extreme detail. Uh, I didn't like this album as much as the EP because, well, I mean, just what happens when you make something longer? There's more time uh, for it to to lose steam. There's more time for things to go wrong. This is my opinion, uh, but even more insane than the first, like way more insane. The experimental mm. stuff uh, doesn't land always for me, but it's always super fun. Yes. Uh, it's a good fucking album. It's a, it's a, I love this album a lot too. Um, but Alex's personal favorite. No. I, w- I would not buy every Butthole Surfers album, but this is one yeah, that I would. I agree. So now we're on to 1986's Rembrandt Pussy Horrors. And I promise this isn't Neil Young's Heart of Gold. I know. I thought the same thing. It's the exact same thing. sounds like it's lifted also another sorry another song can you, can you restart it it's oh you had it turned out yeah. okay yeah my bad but the charles brothers are shame yeah the song is great those fucking it's got pianos it's got creepy ass strings it's got silly ass gibby do- it's a great combination i love it's it a good song 
Spear. Yeah. Little little beef heart over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I really do like Gibby's voice. It's like silly enough. It's yeah, not it's a lot of range tough. too. Yeah, because you have like the the like cello. Not that it's like exactly like cello, no, but, but it, it, it quivers and it has the wiggliness. Yeah, cello's just a good jumping off point yeah. for that. But you have those, and then you have like his more like menacing, like crazy yeah. rants. Okay, so. I don't think it's as good as interesting as the previous album, but I think it's still a good album. Agreed. Uh, this one, I thought I was going to not like it after my first listen. I was like, Ooh, this is, this one's kind of rough. It doesn't stand out as much. No, but it's I, and some I, good stuff. After I went back to it, uh, I still like it a lot. Uh, even crazier, even crazier, even crazier. This is considered more experimental yeah. because they're, using uh studio tape editing mm-hmm. sound modulation when they start doing that that is basically bottle servers at their most powerful yes. when they start doing the tape it yeah the tape editing and stuff and, and the uh, samples or whatever it's just so fucking crazy man yeah and a lot more instruments on here piano yeah. organ violin so uh this to me is kind of a, a growing album but uh, a lot of people like it and um American Woman. Oh. I, I, I think that's one of my least favorite classic rock Same, songs. I fucking hate that song. But I think because the industrial drum sound on there and the obnoxious vocals, it is. Listen to it. Listen, man. <laughs> they cover American Woman on here. It's barely a cover. It's fucking. It's. I guess it has a couple little things that you can kind of. You know, connect the dots, but I'm those. So those put put on a little bit of that. Yeah, <laughs> we're like ranting and ra- uh, <laughs> listeners need a taste. Those fucking dramas, man. Yeah. So they're ridiculous. They're ridiculous sounding. I like it. I like. I don't like this cover that much or this song at all, but I like those drums a lot. Yeah, I. I think if you're like a Butthole Servers fan, though, like it's still a track you gotta listen to. Yeah. Cause yeah, you still got the obnoxious. Obnoxious. Ah. <laughs> Dude, this is hilarious. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Okay. Uh, so one thing I want to talk about a little bit is the live stuff. The fact that they have two drummers. So Teresa, Teresa Nervosa or Teresa Taylor is her birth name. Uh, her government name. And uh, King Coffee. So two drummers already unorthodox. And they didn't do two drummers in a way that's like. It's not jazzy or really impressive technically. It's just crazy because for one, they both stood up when playing. Yes, it's not fairly obvious on all the recordings, but when you see them live, the power is fucking awesome. They're both real good for one. To make you even more jealous, that's why I saw them. That was like the gimmick. It was them and the Melvins. It was the... It's right were both two bands with when, two drummers that was when they were with big business yeah yeah so uh and then i didn't like i wasn't familiar with the sur- surfers i didn't realize seeing them with Teresa was like a, a, a big s- deal a special treat she yeah, hadn't been so. there for many many years yeah uh, i'm assuming that was around 2009 to, exactly yeah i, I looked feeling, it up yeah. it was at one of the worst venues too and i think that's probably why where was it it was at uh is it called the novo or something oh it's in la live by the staple center it's supposed mm-hmm. to be part of you know staple center um or it was called club nokia oh and club it, nokia you think because it's shiny and new it's the shits it sounds awful in there uh, that's not the first time i've heard that yeah i saw Mastod on there sounded awful mm-hmm. the 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 sight line is is awful if you're not in the pit yeah fucking mm. stay home so sorry little rant no, there, no I, I understand uh so two drummers they both stand up when they play and i gotta say man 
from a live standpoint, that alone is enough to be like, what the fuck's happening here? What's yes. happening here? That's enough to grab your attention. Two standing drummers already. I'm already sold. And the funniest thing about that is back in the day, uh, they, uh, Teresa and, and Coffee would pretend that they were siblings because they fucking looked exactly the same. They looked exactly the same. It's it, hilarious, you honestly. Know, you know what I kind of liked about the DVD, and I don't know if it was intentional, is when they're laying in bed, they all, not just them, but they all kind of look like they're related. Yeah. It and, looks super inbred, kind of like uh, yeah. white, white uh, Rob Zombie version of uh, redneck serial killer type family yeah and then like she's like kind of butch looking yeah and then when gibby puts a bra on you get this like i don't know if it's intentional but you kind of get these like androgynous people yeah yeah and it's like i don't know if that's intentional or not but it's a weird i don't like it this fits into the weirdness that is the yeah. the butthole surfers i think everything they did was we're going to intend to do we're what we want to do. We're, we're just trying to freak we're you out. We're just going to do whatever the hell we want. And so Teresa and King Coffee, like, so one thing about Teresa is that I didn't realize this until I was like reading a little bit about the band and it blew my fucking mind because I didn't realize it. Have you, you know, the movie Slacker? Oh yeah. She's on the cover. She's on the cover. Yeah. And I, I remember watching that movie years back and like liking it a lot. It's like one of those cult indie films made in the eighties. That movie totally helped kick off the, uh, uh, side note, um, the big wave of independent filmmaking, like you would not have your Kevin Smith yeah. or came on 1990. Um, yeah, that movie really helped independent filmmaker. That whole wave of yeah. like Merrimack stuff really helped filmmakers be like, we can do this. The, the slacker. It's, uh, it's it, hardly a movie. It's kind of yeah. just following weirdos around Austin. Like, the, uh, I was obsessed with clerks, still kind of am. And that's how I found Slacker years mm -hmm. ago. And it's like, yeah, it, it, fall, it's, it starts off with one person, one of the conversation, and it just turns to another person in the conversation. And it just does that person to person to person. And one of those people is Teresa from Bottle Service, and she's on the cover. Didn't even realize it was a girl until I yeah. saw the movie because she's very, very androgynous looking. Yeah. And uh, she had like this, her and Coffee had the same hair. They wore the same little tiny John Lennon glasses. Yep. And they both play drums standing up and it's so fucking entertaining to watch them go. Cause like it's powerful. It's almost like they're doing kettle drum shit. It's like, it's, it looks great. It's yeah. awesome. It sounds awesome. Yes. It's definitely one of those things that sounds better live. I think than it does on the studio. Uh, so back to the album, uh, kind of got sidetracked. Oh. Get they, more do, side track. they do more crazy shit live, but like a little later on, mm -hmm. but, uh, here, uh, like other songs that I fucking love, uh, wait for Jimmy to kick. I, that is like one of the most paranoid songs ever. Mm. Strangely uh, scary, strangely driving actually. Yeah. If there's a fast tempo, but then they have like these creepy, like radio vocals yeah, yeah. over it. And it, it just works. I really dig the, the psychedelia in whirling hall of knives, whirling hall of knives. Uh, Mark says, and in the cellar, Oh, Mark says, all right. Yeah. Or oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mark says all right. And in the cell, those are my three favorite songs on the album. Yeah. I, so, I think they're fairly close together, right? Like, I believe so. But, I, think, yeah, I think they're all back to back or. Oh yeah. Like that. This, that uh, one, I guess a one, three punch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously. I, I think that's like the highlight of the album for me. These, uh, these, these songs and a lot of this early stuff, it's really what Bottle Servers were fucking amazing at is creating these really, really disturbing experimental stuff. Mm -hmm. Not super like uh, take us seriously, like like a throbbing gristle where we're going to talk about fucking horrible things in life and you're going to be scared by what we're talking about while also sounding creepy. It's just sounding creepy. Mm -hmm. Like there's like this weird kind of uh, peppering of, pardon the pardon, uh, <laughs> weird peppering of silliness on top of the most disturbing, creepy sounds. Yeah. So it's like, it somehow that makes it more genuine when like they're not trying to scare you; they just are scaring you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh we're gonna talk about the EP attached to this. Which one's that? The uh, cream corn from the sockets of Davis. I don't know if I, did what, I listen to that. Uh, it is the streaming version. This is attached 
to it, so that's why I bring it up. Does, does, ha- it, does it say it's attached to it on the streaming version? Uh, I don't think it says. I think it's this additional track. So when... Um, you know what? Show me what it looks like on, on yours. Just when so- Moving to Florida starts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it did here. Okay, so it ends before that. It ends at what? Mark says, all right? Uh, in the Cellar is the oh, end the of the cell. album. Okay. And then when you get to Moving in Florida, that's from an uh, EP called okay. Cream Corn from the Sockets of Davis. Okay. okay. Which Davis is uh, Sammy Davis because he had a fake eye uh-huh. and they wanted to have an album cover of this Cream Corn spewing from his That's fucking ridiculous but they they couldn't get the artwork right so yeah. uh um moving to florida is like if the water boy recorded a song i think it is so annoying it, yeah it's, it's so it's, annoying it's i'm gonna throw that on fuck man i'm gonna move you down to florida mama says the medulla ambergata <laughs> I'm I like go girls go and I like football play. too. Captain Insano. Man, we're fucking awful. How long is this song? It's pretty long. It's pretty long. I just wanted the yeah. I just wanted the water boy. Yeah, vocals. most of it is the those weird vocals. However, there's a part in there toward the end, uh that like the toward the end of the section, like this little small last section where they go real fast and it's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh again, just another uh, incidents where you can't really pick this band. Uh, what's the other one? Comb? Comb is fucking heavy. I Hell th- yeah. This band, surprisingly, isn't heavy that often. No, but, but when they are, oh. Comb, Comb's great. They are the fuck. They're like, they're as, I think they can be as uh, as attributed to creating sludge as, yes. as the Melvins and, yeah. and Black Flag. Um, Aside from moving to Florida, I do like the rest of the EP. I yeah. like all of it. I like all of it. I like TP TP Parter and TP Parter uh, has some really cool like 1950s guitars. Yeah. And uh and Tornadoes like that one as well. Uh, I didn't realize that was a separate EP. Uh Russell would, would have noted it, but apparently I enjoyed That's that. That's uh, what I'm here for. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a good album, but it's really hard to grab onto clearly because of all the experimental shit. The creep if you like creepiness and disturbing stuff and you're not immediately put off by what's what i'm gonna say non-music a lot mm-hmm. of this is non-music it's just psychedelia but uh I, w- I would say it's more musical than uh something else but yeah it's still pretty musical it has actual songs like we, we literally put on some but uh the highlights are still as high as ever uh mm-hmm. this is this band is very unique i think some of the backstory of this album i think they had it they recorded this at the same time as um, Psychic Powerless and Levant Sack. Yes, they recorded them too and at the same time and they were going to try to like they thought alternative tentacles would pick yeah. them up. And they alternative tentacles like sat on it for like a year, right? Yeah, there was some weird falling out between yeah. the parties. Which- so I didn't get a chance to read it because uh, because I'm, I'm a... I'm a freeloader i was gonna borrow the the book our bank could be your life from my brother because he had it for many years there's a, a very beefy chapter on the ball service and if you go on wikipedia and stuff every single story is citing that book oh okay. so everything comes from that book and uh i remember reading that chapter in high school instead of paying attention to class and it's it's it, it is fascinating it's a great crazy history of the band and uh why the fuck did i bring that up um was it about alternative tentacles? Probably and so, falling out. That's that's where all the all these stories come from. And uh, I think uh, the the guy, I want to say the person who Jello said the you know who promised us said I would pay you back the studio time if you you know mm-hmm. re, I'll reimburse you. That guy. Um, oh yeah, it's like he a held very on Texas to stuff name too. like Big Bob yeah, something. The uh, the boss, I think. So, yeah, his name was the boss, and it was, they called it Boss Studios. Uh, he held on. I don't know if it was was it this one that he held on to. I think he held on to this. I think and, he held on to a few things. Yeah. And then, uh, t- touch and go picked. Touch them and up. go. So, uh, th- the version that Alternative Tentacles was holding on to of this album is not the same track listing in order as the one that that we have now. Mm-hmm. So this is the one that Touch and Go put out. Uh, well, now now the butthole surfers control everything, right? right? They, uh, they own all their... I hope so. Or mo- they, at least most of it. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure. I hope so. But uh, the version that's out now is not the original version, if that means anything to anybody. But uh, still, good album. Crazy stuff. 
it's it, it almost it kind of surprised me when I found out this this was recorded at the same time as the first album because mm. it, it sounds like different. it sounds like a, of a definite progression like they're going toward oh, yeah. a thing. Uh, either way, crazy uh, as if you couldn't figure that out by now. But now we are moving on to an album that they are very known for. Yes, very known for. This is uh, 1987's Locust Abortion Technician. Daddy. Yes, son. We skipped a long intro. Yes. Because it's very long. Well, son, I had a friend who loved this album, and that was like my then intro to, to uh, regret something you have done than to regret, regret something, something you haven't, haven't done. done. And by the way, if you see your mom this weekend, would you be sure and tell her Satan! 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 One of the best fucking covers of all time. I fuck, and it's not even a cover. It's kind of a cover. Cover-ish. <laughs> it sounds like someone who liked the rip, but can't like fully play it in time. Yeah. So this is the riff of Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath, if you could tell. This is called Sweet Loaf. The shit gets crazy. And that's about all we get of the the Black Sabbathness of the song. Like it goes back there a few times, but yeah. it's mostly like alternating between this fucking really pretty riff, a bunch of other crazy shit, and that one Black Sabbath riff. It's <laughs> the the most liberal take on a cover <laughs> you really could do. I adore this. It's fun. It's a fun song. I love it. Okay. All right. Let's talk. I don't love this album. I hate you. Best personal favorite. Of course it uh, is. And and here's the thing. I didn't want it to be my personal favorite because mm-hmm. like this is the one that everyone talks about. Uh, but going back to it. Sometimes there's a reason, though. It Going back to this album, because I like this album a lot as a teenager. I listen to this a lot as a teenager. And there is something about it's like a perfect storm of the experimentation, the creepy, the really creepy uh, like I don't want to say sampling, but like you know, cunts for example, K U N T Z. They just take a full on Thai song and just leave it as is, but changing little parts to make it fucking weird, but also hilarious. That song is, you know, what I'm gonna do, right? You know, put a little bit, of, put a little good. I've been waiting. This one of the funniest songs ever. Hilarious. It's a Thai song. And they just took a little part of it because it sounds like they're saying cunts. Dude, dude. What the fuck is that? It's uh, and I like I like the song, <laughs> honestly. Like the the original Thai song, like I like it. I fucking yeah. think it's it's fucking cool, and and it's it's both hilarious and creepy at the same time, which is just such a weirdly butthole surface thing. Yeah, if you couldn't tell by the cover, this album is just driven by nightmare feel shit. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm lazy. I don't know if there's a difference between the grave graveyards. There's slight difference, but it's but they're kind of the same song. Graveyard and USSA. USSA, yeah. Just that's pure nightmare, dude. Shit to me. USSA is fucking menacing. Put on that motherfucker, dude. Oh, This shit gives me goosebumps, man. I fucking love that. It's just, I want to hear this in a survival horror game as I'm being chased. Yeah, it'd be appropriate. Yeah. So here's the thing for anybody off put by this. Oh, fuck. It's, yeah, it's noise, all right? It's noise. (laughs) I'm not going to hide around the fact that it's just fucking noise, but it's noise that makes me feel a certain way. Sure. Uh, Really not upsetting. It's just Mm. like... Fuck man, this is weird. This is yeah. dark. This is dark. And then there are moments of musicality, not as much as earlier albums, but you get uh Pittsburgh to Lebanon, which is 
it's blues if it were made specifically for Mike because I don't like blues, but I, I love that song. I wrote that one. We've gone full beef heart yeah. here. That is like uh, where they may have dabbled in it. That song wouldn't like if someone was like, oh, yeah, that's a beef heart cover. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. It's super heavy. It's bluesy, but it is uh, just a uh, just a little little hit. Not a, what's the word? It's a little touch of nightmare, a little mm. touch of nightmare. And, uh, oh my God. Human, human cannonball is, uh, some more crowd rock vibes, but it turns into a punk song. It's human, crazy. Human cannonball is, uh, I'm going to go on record saying the easily the most accessible song on this album. It is the most song probably. Okay. And it's very catchy, very catchy, very cool. The guitar solo in the intro is glorious i mm-hmm. it uh polar is doing it's i don't know if there's like a tremolo effect on there so it sounds really wiggly it's very uh put on that you know just put on a little bit of it <laughs> it's it's got a great intro uh i like blacked out what song or i figured it yeah let's <laughs> simply put on it <laughs> Yeah, this is like, like very driving. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love Gibby's voice. His voice in here is great. And it's such a punk riff, too. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, the intro is eight fucking minutes long. Well, I'm gonna fast forward a little. I know where I'm gonna stay. Okay. Right here. That is cool, right? Yeah. Oh, I love this. This intro just fucking. Oh, god damn. so good it's so good yeah the song continues a, a lot more that gibby sings he sings he's not just losing his mind he actually sings on that song um and then before no i don't want to get to the, the the fucking climax of this album just yet well wait i what do you consider the last track i come to oh, the no, 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 okay, no, no. okay go, go, go ahead uh the omen oh. is so chaotic it's weird it's hardly a song hardly but it works for me really That's, it works for me uh-huh. And I assume the omen is what uh, King Diamond or Merciful Fate sounds like to normal people. Man, like, yeah. when normal people hear King Diamond shit, I assume it sounds like this song. And they were actually, like, parodying a metal band. Called The Omen, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's why it sounds like that. But, uh, yeah, I had that thought when I was like, oh, yeah, like, people who don't listen to weird stuff, if they hear King Diamond. Yeah, it they would sounds think exactly what like we song. hear when we hear uh, the, the Omen. Uh, it's my it's my weakest, weakest song in there for me. It's my least favorite on the on the album. G- but Gibby is a completely unhinged lunatic on there. To he's me, just gibber. He's just gibberishing. He's gibberishing all over the mic. To me, like this, it works because, you know, based on the album cover and they're called the butthole surfers, like there's a level of comedy to yeah. him. So it works to me more in that aspect. It de- de- yeah, for sure it does. Um, and uh, like, oh man, it, hey, hey, H A Y. There's H E Y. Hey, from the first EP, which is a beautiful song. H A Y. H A Y. Hey, on here is just completely. It's just completely bad shit. It's completely bad mm-hmm. shit. Uh, but genuinely creepy and very cool sounding. Uh, not a musical album by any stretch of the imagination but now i want to get to the the fucking greatest song ever made that is the sludgiest song they've ever done 22 going on 23 is is a sludge masterpiece it the fact it came the the fact that this is 1987 is Mm mind-blowing it's uh disturbing it's creepy it's heavy it's pretty uh, paul lear's guitar work on this whole album is phenomenal but on that song specifically it's fucking haunting and the the main uh, th- the most notable thing about this this song is uh, 
the the, the radio recording of a woman talking about uh, how she was sexually abused uh, on a radio show and she's talking about her experience and it's like really like, oh, oh fuck. And then I hear more and then there's like a, an actual backstory to that. Uh, so Paul Leary had the radio on one night and he, it was some show, whatever. And then this woman get comes on, she calls in and she's just telling the story and he felt compelled to just hit record. And the, what he thought as well as the band was like, I don't believe this woman is telling any truth. Uh, because in the song, in the song and in the recording, she says, uh, I'm 22 going on 23. Well, she clearly sounds like an old woman. She sounds not at all like a woman in her 20s. Also, I don't think 22 year olds say I'm, I'm 22 going on 23. 23. Like it's that's weird, something an old person says. It's such a specific line. And yeah. that's why the song is called that. Cause he, it struck him. He's like, this is really weird. I feel like this is all made up. And then she calls in a lot. Waking mm. up to, it's not like there's no truth to it. Like we don't know if, if she was telling the truth or if she was sure. lying, but if you listen to it either way, if, if it, the story is true that she's telling and she was sexually assaulted, it's fucking creepy. If, if it's a person who's out of her mind and making up a story because still she's creepy, it's still <laughs> creepy. Everything about the song is completely perfect. It, they nailed everything they were trying to do. It's heavy. It's fucking powerful. It's really creepy. It's pretty. It's one of the, my favorite songs, maybe in the whole world. Yep. I really, really love that song. Uh, Outs- outside of all the the comedy and noise of this album, if I was only going to pick two songs for people to listen to off here, I would say Human Cannonball and 22 going on 23. As much as I love this album from beginning to end, and I think it's an experimental masterpiece, it's mm-hmm. one of the best experimental albums ever made in my opinion, I agree with those two songs. If you're going to listen to any two songs off this album, Human Cannibal and 22 going on 23. See, this because I don't love it doesn't mean we're not going to get along. I, know. I, just, I fucking love this album yeah. so much. Dude, because like I, like I said before, I liked it growing up. Mm-hmm. It was not my favorite. And now it's just like, oh, this is just bliss. I fucking, this is exactly what I'm into these days. And this part of my life yeah. this is exactly what I'm into. Uh, so obviously... You know, highly recommend it. Equal parts horrific and hilarious, and with some genuinely good songs sprinkled in there. Um, but it's time to move on. As much as I could talk about this album endlessly, it is time to move on to 1980s. Love this album title. Love this album title. It's one of my favorite album titles ever. 1988's Hairway to Steven. I'm this is their uh, quote unquote tribute to Jimi Hendrix, this song here. It's called Jimmy. Yeah. Yep. But I love that this is how, like, Gibby and Paul, in their head, this is what Hendrix sounds like. <laughs> it's not at all what Hendrix sounded like. <laughs> this song is amazing. So aside from Gibby's uh, slowed down vocals, this is a fucking rocking song. Yes, yeah. because it's it's for Jimmy. It's got it's for rocking. Jimmy, dude. It's for Jimmy. It's really long too. Twelve minutes. But I think it's a perfect twelve minutes. Uh, it is. It, it sounds so repetitive right now that I thought it was going to be torture. It is not. It is not. It is wonderful. I love this song. And uh, actually, I want you because. To get a good example, I want to I wanna highlight this song. I want you to put on just three minutes in. Because three minutes in, it changes. Oh, well, and it three. becomes amazing in a different way. Uh, okay. Damn. What a fucking sludgy great riff. They are probably one of the most underrated guitar solo bands, yeah. I think. Their solos, even if you think the rest of the song is a mess, like yeah. the solos are always very interesting to me. Holy Ruth is fantastic. And now, Alex, I want you to put on 7 minutes, 40 seconds. We're doing the... And this is what happens to the song over the course of 12 minutes. You got some acoustic guitars for the first time in their career. Acoustic guitars. If this part feels like it smashed on, but it 
It's it works. Yeah, it shouldn't. But it does. It's a beautiful riff too, and it sounds very clear. It sounds good. Also, I may get some flack for this, but sometimes I think their songs would work better as like instrumentals. Uh, I think that they definitely could. Mm-hmm. If crazy, ridiculous vocals bother you, because I'm able to just kind of put vocals like Gibby's. Yeah, in the you never care. They they never bother me. Uh, it's not that they bother me, but yeah, I don't know. But saying that, best I I'm glad you I'm glad you gave it something because this was my favorite growing up. This yeah. was this is the one that I thought was going to be my favorite. Still, it's a fucking amazing album, but the, it just parts of it. Uh, I felt my attention dipping. Oh. Also, I will say before this, you would think like this is not a band that needs to be playing acoustic guitars. They write some really cool acoustic guitar. Yeah. Like it's just another tool in their toolbox yep. they can use. They're, They're just good artists. They're just surprisingly the butthole surfers are just good <laughs> artists. It's this album. Uh, I think like I'm looking at the cover. I'm listening to the music. Ridiculous cover. Awful cover. In my opinion. <laughs> I'm like this. They are to rock music. What Ren and Stimpy is to cartoons. It's just all over the place. Grossness. It's kind of beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could tell people worked hard on yeah. it. But it's just really weird. Um, it's a, not a bad comparison at all. Uh, so we obviously dive the fuck into Jimmy. It's a great song. And then this the first half of this album is kind of fucking flawless, man. Dude, R- Ricky with the flamenco guitar parts. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's too uh, uh, Lucy and Ricky, Ricky. But uh, I would yeah. think with the guitar parts. Yeah. It's, uh, there's almost like metals yeah, and not in like a vomit inducing way, like bands, like is it mana or oh, mana? Yeah. It's not, it doesn't come across like Latin rock. It's no, no really cool. Like, uh, like the white stripes did with conquests. It's more like that. Uh, put on a little bit of that. This is like, it has a little bit of, it's a little rough around the edges with some like, you know, those crazy, you know, just sounds thrown in there. But aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. It's a fucking western ass riff right there. Yeah. This yeah. would be a beefy episode. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't know I, if I, I want to get to like the full on aspects. Yeah, it, it does. Case. It does pick up quite a bit though. Uh, I saw next year. Next year, have a girl passing gas. I love that song so much. Really, it fell kind of flat to me, Ow. but the, you won't let you never let me fucking Sorry. finish. <laughs> there is some cool instrumentation. Uh-huh. I may come around on that song eventually because there are parts of it where I'm like. Oh, this is really cool, but this like the whole package does. I, I that was my that song. I remember being so uh, blindsided by that when I first heard that as a as a teenager because it's first of all it's a fucking it's a, the the title sure is ridiculous, but the I mean it's a, just a well written great chord progressions. Uh, it's mostly acoustic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's got a full band, but it's acoustic guitars and. Uh, you know, put on put on that fucking song just because uh, the the main riff is just so damn so damn catchy. It had some uh, Husker Du vibes to it. Some later Husker Du, I, I, I could definitely see that. Ten foot tall and you could definitely hear the the double drums in this song too. Oh yeah, Pro, any band with two drummers, you're better off with headphones. Yeah. Down the hall, the dentist loom through the door. I saw next real girl passing down. It's such a rock song. Or a <laughs> I love it. Oh, good writing. Great writing. And then uh, 
as it goes on, you can really hear Paul Leary doing some fucking cool stuff. There, on, yeah, on for acoustic a, guitar. There, like a what is that? Four or five minutes uh, for like a five minute song. There, it's like a condensed prog rock song. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, I I don't I keep forgetting. I can't let myself forget because this is the last album with Teresa Nervosa or Taylor. Um, I thought it was. Uh, yeah. This is. The, oh yeah. 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 Uh, so before this, around. 86 uh i think around 86 that's when we get uh what's her fucking name the naked dancer kathleen uh fucking hold on i'm googling right now because i'm bad at my job i will say uh teresa i think after leaving the band suffered a aneurysm aneurysm and, and had to undergo brain surgery um being in a band like this with strobe lights probably isn't the best Not for that. Good, right. I'm glad she was, you know, able to recover yeah. and eventually rejoin the band. That's pretty fucking dark, man. Uh, Kathleen Lynch. So uh, she was a friend of uh, a brief. There was a brief stint, I think, in 85 or 86 where, where Teresa left and they replaced her with another female standing drummer. Mm. Uh, I don't remember her name because I'm bad. Uh, you know, what? I'm just going to fucking look it up because uh that's what we do here. Um, well, Mike's doing, doing that. that. Yeah, I really love uh, Johnny Smokes. It's, oh, Johnny Smokes! Yeah, it's, it's great. like a perverted, twisted version of a Dick Dale song. Yeah. yeah. So that the intro to that song is one of the funniest fucking things. It's it's like a parody mm-hmm. of uh, rock singers talking about what the song is about and how it's about love and hate and he's just going he's just rambling but it's fucking it's if it, hilarious if it wasn't obvious before that he's a mentally deranged person that song will really drive it home yeah uh rocky this is some great acoustic bass so, you don't hear that all, you yeah. don't hear that sentence a lot but uh i really like uh i like rocky i don't like its placement on the album because it comes right after johnny smoke which is really long it's pretty it's like extremely melodic mm-hmm. and after that i like just my brain wants to go like okay we did a long pretty thing go something heavy go something crazy and then rocky is even softer it's even mm. softer so it's like it's a good song that i feel just uh placed badly on the album the 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 replacement drummer for Teresa during uh 80 86 was her name was cabbage what the fuck that can't Damn. be your name all that time on the internet it is it's hold so- on uh, <laughs> oh yeah it was a fake name her, they called her Cabbage Gomez Jr. her real name was uh, uh, Keitha Granat it's a weird spelling K-Y-T-H-A so that replacement Cabbage just call her Cabbage fuck it uh, she was friends with Kathleen and uh, brought her on to be the naked dancing lady on stage uh, they call her like the Tara the shit lady was another nickname they had for her mm-hmm. uh, which is I mean, it's very butthole surface and she would do just that. She would just be on stage dancing naked while the band did all the crazy shit. Uh, I, there was a lot of um, really specific stories in our bank of your life. Uh, I don't remember them specifically, but I know it got gnarly like fucking oh, what the hell are they doing kind of stuff. Hilarious. Great yeah. stuff. Uh, just one other uh, notch in the spectacle that was butthole surfers shows. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to get to that before because eventually, uh, obviously, it's, Teresa came back. Yeah. Uh, so, and this was her last album. And I don't know when it, I think the the Naked Dancing Lady left like around eighty nine, something like that. But around here is when you know the the peak peak butthole surfersness of everything. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, go ahead, keep keep talking about the album. I, I, back just, ass, back ass, hell yeah, good song, good song. That's like, it feels like uh, they kind of abandon psychedelia, but back at says no. Sir. Not quite just yet, but for the most part, this is their first music album, for lack of a better term. Yeah, to me, this album kind of uh, hits the sweet spot of uh, both worlds that Butthole Surfers lives in. It's the most successful. This album, I think, is the, the first one where they... Uh, had the songs completed and then went to the studio to record them. Mm-hmm. Whereas before they would just sort of dick around in the studio, experiment, and that's why it's so and that's why it's so accessible for one and so I don't want to say normal, but kind of normal sounding. Yes, uh, they continue this for the rest of their career, and I think it was 
the the longest what pink uh pinkus the the longest oh, bass yeah. player they had what's his name yeah jeff pinkus, jeff pinkus who would uh do stuff with the melvins sure would and- uh, Pinkus abortion technician, I think is what the name of the reference to yep. yeah, Bottle Service album. Um, he said that he thought that this move to record that way was a very bad and it would lead to the downfall. Mm. And so this is like, first of all, it's the most musical album they've ever done. Uh, and it has just enough weird to still be very butthole surfers. The, you got to start with this album. Like if you, if you, if you're really nervous, not nervous, if you're really like questioning whether or not you like this band, if this album has to be the one, because the the EP, the first EP is a good representation, but here is a lot more musical. Here is a mm-hmm. lot more to grab onto. Uh, but there's, there's still whack, like wonkiness to it. Like I hate Julio Iglesias. I hate that song. I like I, not the artist. I mean, I don't care about the I li- artist, but I like Julio. Cause uh, you bought up earlier. They have some like big band elements. And to me, uh, there's parts of Julio where it's like, what if we took these big band elements and mixed them with noise? Uh, the, Julio Iglesias reminds me more of rockabilly. It's just, Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it just, for sure. It does. It doesn't even feel that, uh, like weird. Like it feels like regular rockabilly, just slightly sillier, like slightly sillier with some regular noise rockab- elements, like a little, like yeah. the touch of it. Uh, overall, I don't care for it. And the song fast. I like the guitars in there. It's very wacky, very crazy sounding guitars, but a pretty weak album closer. If you're, if you're judging by the whole thing, um, well, beginning there. Okay. Uh, but aside from that great album, still like it. Still like it a lot. It's great. Show sure is. But man, we have a lot of albums left, and we. All right, it's gonna be a long episode. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. What are What are we at right now? We are at an hour ten. Oh, we can. Let's, get, let's we can get this under let, two. Okay, so now let's move on to 1991's. Uh, it's pronounced "pioed," but it's spelled like a word: P I O U H G D. Pioed. 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 Nineteen ninety one. I knew you would do something, do something very odd, very odd, very odd, very odd. Very odd. Very odd. <laughs> you know what? I didn't have it in my notes, and maybe I'm just coming around on it. This is a good song. It's not a bad song. It's a good song. It's not a bad song, yeah. fairly straightforward surprisingly fairly so, straightforward so after that you get revolution 2 and i feel like before they were like a weird band with heavy metal elements now i feel like they're an alt rock band with weird elements revolution part 2 i think is it's long and repetitive but i think it's real real catchy also uh this is my least favorite least favorite i don't blame you it's not a good album it's, uh, I, I, I do like Revolution Part 2, but that's about it. I can see why it has its fans like um, Lonesome Bulldog. They've dabbled in some country, but that's the first like, oh, my God, full blown, like full blown country song. Hold on. If we're going to talk about Lonesome Bulldog, we have to address that. So first of all, I didn't like the song when yeah. it came on. I It's like, OK, they're, they're dabbling with country Western, but it sounds more like like parody country not even like it's not yeah. real country sounds like it's just like what someone who's never heard country thinks country sounds like it's like jokey and stuff and then uh, it ends i'm like okay I, I don't like this song and then it comes on again immediately after i thought oh they're doing the thing where they connect it the, they add a the same song for like 30 seconds after and then they do that two more times this song mm-hmm. is on the album four times the worst song in the album in my opinion is on the album four times <laughs> It, man i I, then, I was flabbergasted <laughs> and then they have what i think is the worst cover song the hurdy gurdy man it's surprisingly oh. straightforward it feels like the only troll element is like oh there's a reverb on the vocals i like what the if, vocal effect what if we turned it all the way up that's I, the only element that's really different honestly i like i really dig the vocal effect on the hurdy gurdy man mm-hmm. uh 
but the the song is still like super long and it's like why it's, it's not that not different doing anything yeah um golden showers to me is a ridiculous elo song it's boring saxophony silliness mm-hmm. hate it uh B- blind man is the first song that i well i guess revolution part one uh i think blind man is one of the few good songs mm-hmm. on the album and then uh psy best song on the album i it's 12 it's 12 minutes of psychedelia i thought it was inexcusable here's the thing that song like they've been playing that live for forever, like forever. it's on the d it's on the dvd it's on the dvd we didn't talk about that by the way no, that, we that didn't. what year there's a few different i think it's 85 86 yeah and there's also because before locust abortion technician for sure mm-hmm. uh and there was a uh, like some snippets of like eighty three where Gibby is like a normal guy trying to plead with the audience, and it's really sad, mm-hmm. uh, really sad. And those performances are so fucking chaotic, so c- crazy. They have a performance of uh, PSY on there, and it's long and crazy and very entertaining. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember which song it is, but like didn't translate to the album though. No, no, not this version. Anyway. And it's pr- it's produced really oddly too. But on on the, on the live record on the. The, the fucking footage uh it's not pinkest it's a different bass player they had yeah. at the time at one point he just leaves the stage and comes back with a tuba and like i swear man if i saw someone do that in real life i would be an immediate fan if someone just left the stage and came back with a tuba god but, damn this they were really fucking entertaining i don't um, know if they still do the the roots used to play with a guy and they called him uh tuba gooding jr that's that's a great name it's a great name uh and then also on this, uh, the Widowmaker EP is attached right. to it. That came and, out before the album um, did, right? Yes, but here it's tacked on at yeah. the end. And really, the only song I cared for off that was Helicopter. Really? I actually liked, well, I didn't love it, but I like Bong's song. It's okay. Uh, I I do like uh, the fucking crazy double pedalness of booze, tobacco, dope, pussy cars, which is a great song title. Honestly. I'm going to need, yeah, I'm going to need a relist. It's that. just the, all double pedals. The EP is a little stronger than yeah. the, than the album. So, uh, uh yeah, the, the, the craziness of no, I'm Iron Man. No, I'm Iron Man. Well, well, I think it's a great song title. Does nothing for me. Yeah. I hate some, I hate the song something. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, man, like, I, I, it's funny because I'm looking at my notes and I see my my realization of every time another version of Lonesome Bulldog comes on. Yeah. And it's just like, lot. did this song really warrant a continuation track? <laughs> uh, there's a third Lonesome Bulldog. <laughs> there's a fourth. A fourth Lonesome Bulldog, huh? <laughs> like, in all You're caps. This, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I, this is gen- generally a pretty not liked album, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, like, even the band doesn't like this. I, as far as I know. But, you know, I could see how there could be fans of it. Yeah, it's not. I think it's pretty bad. But I like, don't. Obviously, I, I gave it least favorite. I don't think it's like a, a mess. It's just not something I want to come back to. I'm not going to come back to it. I do still like Revolution Part 2, though. I think it's neat. Uh, like the curricula, because there's still some craziness on here. They're, mm. they're way more straightforward now, but there's still craziness. The craziness on here isn't disturbing or funny. It's just yeah. boring. It's just boring. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. So not for me, uh, not for definitely not for Alex and probably not for most people. Um, but let's move on to uh, very quickly becoming a very different band. This is 1993's Independent Warm Saloon. Fresh on a major label. Should I fast forward this a little? Or uh, if it takes too long, yeah. Uh, no, I think we'll be fine. This was one of the songs where I was like, I know this song. I just didn't know it was Butthole Surfers. I have some of those, but not not this one. I knew this is Butthole Surfers only because of Beavis and Butthead. This song was on Beavis and Butthead. It's so weird. I realized, like, shit, I was playing this song in Guitar Hero, and I just, like, didn't... Mm-hmm. Like, I was never like, oh, it's by the butthole. Yeah. I was just fucking playing it in Guitar Hero yeah. all the time. You know who produced this album? Who's that? John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. What the fuck? What? 
That's so weird. So, this is a totally different band now. Completely different band. And I think it's fun. Yeah. Like, well, I'll get into the music, but I think going in this direction is it, totally fine. If that's what they... If that's what they wanted? Yeah. God bless them. This is a way better album, too. Oh, than, yeah. Than the, uh, oh, way better. Give sounds great here. Yeah. Very Guitar Hero appropriate That's song. right. I'm remembering Guitar Hero. I'm now remembering any Guitar Hero. Okay. So, I, yeah, I, I, it's very straightforward. It's very rocking. Now there's this elements of weirdness peppered in. I th- I think it's a good album. It's a though. pretty good album. Well, so one thing you're, I, for, I you're, forgot- you're not don't come here for what we were talking about. No, you no. will be disappointed. This is, and and vice versa. If you want something more straightforward, don't go to the early stuff. But one thing I forgot to mention on the last album is that because Teresa's not there, it's just King Coffee. Yes, and those drums sounded like really bad Casio keyboard drums, mm-hmm. or like for lack of a better term, like a, like a really bad cheap drum machine here. Uh, it's just coffee, but it sounds great. It sounds produced oh, like yeah. professionally because it fucking is. Yeah, they're on a major label. They bought in John Paul Jones. And yeah, it better sound fucking. Yeah. it better sound good. It sounds great. It's solid and frightening, frighteningly normal. But that's it not works. A bad, it's not a bad thing. It fucking works. What really fucking made this not great for me is just how goddamn long the album is. You know, it's long, but. I I don't think it's a detriment. It's an it's like an hour seven, maybe a little bit less. Um, Twas uh, the twilight of or not twilight, but the rise of the CDs. So. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's exactly what came into mind when I looked at how long it was. Is because every rock album in the nineties was like an hour plus, and like mm-hmm. that's not good for albums, especially albums where this isn't like full-on concept album, them trying new things and things shifting halfway through and becoming something else. It's just rock song after rock song after rock song for a fucking hour. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much anyone can really do that. Like, it's cool. And like, my attention is fully there for the first half. And the second half, I'm like, God damn, I heard this already on this album. I think it's funny. They have a song called The Annoying Song and it's not even... One of the most top 10 annoying butthole I, surface songs. I literally said the annoying song is ironically not even close to the most annoying yes. butthole surface song. Uh, I don't I don't care for it, but it's still it's like not that bad. If if you want some of that older butthole surface stuff, clean it up is the gro- like grossest song they have on the album. Oh, I like it a lot. It's no, a, it's good. It's the last song, I, right? I'm, yeah, I'm using gross in like an endearing way here. Yeah, it's a chaotic sludgy mess. It's very cool. And it's the only kind of classic butthole surface sounding song. <laughs> and then I thought uh, Dog Inside Your Body is interesting because it made me think of Honey Bucket from the Melvins. Mel- and Honey Bucket came out the same year as this album. So That's it's right, like 93. A, a weird like uh, mm. coincidence there. I actually do like a. Uh, the wooden song. It's very Beatlesy, strong, ro- strong ballad, like a folk song with shredding in it. It's good. I like it. Uh, and as a whole, aside from Gibby's voice, this is pretty much unrecognizable as as butthole servers. Mm-hmm. Like even Paul Leary's guitar playing is is become very straightforward. He's doing regular rock licks now. He's mm-hmm. not doing these these crazy little wiggly uh, East Bay Ray style surf guitar leads and stuff. Um, Dancing Fool, that's his best solo on the album. That is a cool song. That is a really? very cool song. Uh, and, and it's nothing deeper or anything special, but I do like Strawberry a lot, too. Uh, the, the, the low points and what really got to me after a, a while is fucking Dust Devil. I feel like it was kind of pushing it. Yeah, long. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's just really doing, it's doing nothing except hammering on the same riff for an hour. Um, with some dicking around by Leary. Uh, Leave Me Alone, I think, is completely unnecessary. Uh, and The Ballad of Naked, Ma- Naked Man is a neat banjo novelty song. Not for six, six fucking minutes, though. <laughs> like, man, I, I, I'll never understand that. Oh, man. No, um, 
Ballad of Naked Man did not get on my nerves like that. And I thought it's a nice little twangy it's, song. It's nice. Honestly, I think it would even work better if it was placed earlier on the album because mm. it's a nice palate cleanser. Uh, but there's not a lot of meat to unpack on this one. It's very straight, very straightforward. The most straightforward they've ever been uh, until up to this point. But it works. It works. I would not be mad if someone put this on. I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be like, OK, Fuck it's that. not my favorite bottle server zone, but all right. I dig, I dig some of this. We're going to hear some shredding at least. So Hell yeah. Um, and this is like, I mean, clearly, if they were on MTV and Beavis and Buddy, this is when they start picking up a little bit, a little bit of '90s rock steam. Little bit, a little bit. They never, they never got a lot of it, but they got. I think they did. But even then, we'll get to it. Let's get to it right now. Actually, this is uh, 1996's Electric Larry Land. Another great album title, by the way. It's funny, real quick, that the. Uh, Hairway. Hairway to Steven. And then they ended up working with. Yeah, that's just true. A parody of. Uh, like they could have had Stairway to heaven. no idea they would. Yeah. Okay. Uh, clearly. So electrically. Larry Lamb. Yeah. All right, what are we doing here? <laughs> and if you didn't like the last album, this is not going to win you over. No, no. It's more of the last album. But I think it's done better. In, in areas done better. Whoa, I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, one. here we go. Who's it for? I think it's a good album. I just think yeah. the last one's stronger. Okay. It's a fun, angry, alt rock yeah. song. Yeah. And I'm going to continue our trend of playing a second song because the other so- I didn't realize Pepper was a butthole surfer song. I thought it was like Cake or some very like dude, 90s band. You just took it out of my brain, dude. And I'm assuming if me and Mike didn't know, other people didn't. Yeah, there's no way you knew this was butthole surfers so unless you're a fan. <laughs> it is like one of the most 90s songs ever. Here we go. Sorry, sorry. Here we go for real this time. I really like. I love this I song. I love this song. The guitars are so nostalgic to me, dude. It feels good. It feels great. First of all, what the fuck is this? It sounds. And then he's gonna start talking, and you're like, yeah, this is Cake or like the New Radicals yeah. or. Marky Sharon. And Sharon. It's very like back. Yes, very brothers. Back. Very back. I remember this song so vividly from my childhood, not having, having no idea what Bottle Surfer was. Like, fuck, man, so many memories. I kind of want to get to the main I course, because... Yeah. Because that's the part where you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Giddy has never been more tame. Never. God damn, it's a good song. So that like exploded them, but yeah. because they're called the Butthole Servers, yeah. some people wouldn't, or they would just call them BS. Oh, really? Yeah, they would say this by BS. Fuck, man. I, I was r- really pleasantly surprised that that song was on here. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that it was, but I was, man, I'm still, I'm still kind of floored by it. Dude, we over here in uh, Southern California, L- Los Angeles, Los Angeles. Um, we just got off a brutal heat wave. I think we're over. We're just back to normal discussing heat. Yeah. And there was one day I was driving around listening to it and that song came on and it was just, I've never seen the music video for it, but I felt like, what was going on around me just being disgustingly hot people wearing masks just walking around like this is normal i'm like this really like feels like it could have been the music video for yeah if this felt so right yeah and yeah and and it has that super 90s trip hop rhythm section Mm -hmm. which like They've first of all never done before. I never would have saw it coming no, ever. No, it doesn't. It seems so off brand for Bottle Service. Yeah, even after the last album, it's it's out of nowhere. Left field. Uh, but now that we got that out of the way, 
Uh, I like cough syrup a lot. I don't know cough why. Cough syrup's a good fucking song. It's not special, but it's fuck. It's just a good. It's a good song. It's, it's a, a good fucking song. And that that outro with those strings is fucking gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I do dig uh, Thermidor a lot. And fucking jingle of the dog's collar or jingle of a dog's collar. It is strangely endearing. Strangely endearing. Uh, Gibby reminds me of Frank Zappa on that song. Okay. It's the way, the way he's singing it. Uh, and then I'm not going to let you, because uh, I want to do this. My brother's wife. Oh, <laughs> God damn. It's tamed by butthole standards. This is but great. still pretty psychedelic. Good drumming on there. Yeah. If, I don't know if they've ever done that song live with. Teresa, but if uh-huh. they have, I think that, that sound killer mm-hmm. live. I actually kind of like TV Star. It's super. It's just a total pop song, mm-hmm. but I like the lap steel that got in there. It's very nice. It's just, it's just nice. So a lot of this album is. Like, I never thought I'd be using those words to describe the bottle. This is comforting. Yeah, it's, it's like a blanket. It just, it this feels good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The Lord is a monkey. Pretty cool track. Uh, it's got some cool noisy parts, but for the most part, it reminds me of like a bad pepper where he's like talk singing, mm-hmm. rapping, kind of semi rapping, talk singing. And then I think the most chill, laid back, butthole surfer song ever. Let's talk about cars. Dude, I don't know what is happening with all that French. There's just two it's, French people talking. It's like you could you could throw that on when a, a girl is over and be fine. Got to be a very specific kind of girl, to yeah. be honest. I, I don't know. I I can do without it on this album, mm-hmm. but I don't hate it on its own. It just doesn't make like it makes no sense. It's just yeah. why are the, there's a French conversation with some spaciness behind it. What's happening here? Yeah. Why is this going on? Uh, I also dig space. Space is good. This song is not bad. It's uh, the place. Sure is. <laughs> there's nothing outstanding here. It's very standard 90s rock. Uh, pretty big departure stylistically, but it's not bad. Also, I like the pacing on here too. And I, I think I, I prefer it over the last one. Independent Warm. Over Independent Warm because one, a little bit shorter. It's not a lot of bit shorter. It's like 50 <laughs> minutes. Uh, it's still too long. I think it just it's paced better. There's more stylistic changes. That out of nowhere trip hop hip hop sounding rhythm section i don't generally love that but the fact that it's thrown in on here helps to spice it up i like that i uh i think independent worms a stronger album but i totally get how pepper cough syrup and jingle of dogs collar could put this over the top for other people yes yeah. yeah it's a it seems it sounded like they're they're pretty much getting normal with every it's a consecutive album and it's, it's so weird how like they've never been bigger than after this yeah, album yeah. <laughs> and they didn't well they didn't stop but they just like it's figured out it, they didn't put out any albums to like capitalize yeah. on it so. that's a i don't you don't know any no insight as to why no i just, didn't yeah it just stopped kind of I, oh i know he did uh that project p who uh, Gibby with Flea, like a super group with Flea and some other people. Uh, this is called P. Uh-huh. And then that kind of the sounds like where they've been at, where the, the still like toured and did stuff. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like for the most, and I'm talking about them like they're over. We still got one more album. But, yeah. Say one more. But like from here on out, it this sounds like they're kind of more interested in doing other bands. They, they do seem that way. Uh, when Paul Leary was talking about how they wanted to do another bottle record, he's like, yeah, we're all really busy with our own things. I mean, we have to see if it lines up kind of right. it's like, yeah, it's, it's more like it seemed as though from that interview that he was more interested in that butthole service should have another album more yes. than he wanted to do another album. Also, I believe it was him. He does not like touring anymore. Right? Really? Uh, it might've been Gibby, but one of them was like, they're like, I'm, I'm done touring. It's They're old the men. F- They're old yeah. men. And they but, really went nuts in the, in the I, early days too. I feel like if they play shows, I could see them doing like festivals. Cause that's mm-hmm. like one and done. You're not on the road. Yeah. But, uh, we're moving on to a few years later. There was a little bit like, like Alex said, no capitalization on the, the success they got from this album. None being on Letterman and yeah. All that shit. But now we're at the very final album. Uh, uh, here we go. 2001's Weird Revolution. This kind of like... On behalf of Dr. Timothy Leary, in association with 
made me think of Suicide, how yeah. like Suicide came out of nowhere with like some hip hop influence. That's exactly what I thought of. Exactly what I thought of. So you got like the Gibby rambling, but yeah. not the uh, not, not the, the music. Yeah. yeah. Also, his voice on here, I'll, I'll mention that because I forgot to mention it earlier. Uh, the song pretty much does this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so on that track, he sounds like he's talking through uh, a megaphone, which Bottle Surfers pioneered that megaphone. Yeah, stuff we didn't for, really get into that. I, there's so much about this band that we're clearly going to miss some stuff, but like uh, Gibby definitely. Uh, pioneered the the using a megaphone as a microphone, and uh, I remember seeing or reading an interview later on because Fleming Lips really oh, took yeah. a hold of that. Uh, what's his name? Um, Kurt Wayne. Wayne. Why did I think his name was Kurt? Um, I'm thinking of Meat Puppets. Uh, Wayne uh, Gretzky. He took that, <laughs> and obviously Fleming Lips are wildly successful. And I think giving me like a, a passive aggressive comment at one point, like you know, I'm just saying, you know, just. We didn't I thought to, they were friends. Like I'm, sh- I'm sure it was like an intended, like uh, yeah, yeah. A, a, a jab, like specifically it was yeah, not like a bad. Because I think the Flaming Lips are pretty open about how the Bubble yeah. Surfers. You gotta be. Them. You gotta be. Yeah. Uh, but Gibby started that for sure. Even Mike Patton does a lot of mega, not megaphone per se, but he does like a lot of like uh, cop, ra- sta- cop yeah. radio kind of stuff in, in lieu of microphones. Uh, however, Wor- same time, uh, well, you, you already said you already said w- worse, worse by a. F- Fucking so much. This one, I was, I thought, I thought PO was going to be the worst. I was con- so did I. convinced PO was the worst. And then this comes in and I was like, Wait, what? How did they get, how did they become this band? What it's you heard not, in that opening track is the whole album pretty pr- much. Pretty much. Like, uh, also much like Suicide, they've kind of set themselves up as a band who could do anything, but it's like, this isn't, this isn't it. It doesn't, it doesn't work like like you have something like venus which I, yeah like if the beastie boys did it I th- that'd be fucking great like venus isn't that bad but it's still it's still pretty cringy by the standards of what these guys do mm-hmm. and here's what, what, what came to uh, i thought that i that came to mind was you said that it, it brought up thoughts of uh suicide's last album mm-hmm. episode 51 uh and I thought the same thing and how we didn't really hate that last suicide album. It was like hip hoppy and weird, but it was like kind of quirky and, and okay. Yeah. Here's the thing. An average suicide album is a horrible butthole surfers <laughs> album. Like what we've come to expect and, and appreciate from this band is so much more diverse and, and kind of crazy and chaotic and melodic in a lot of places that this is like, why'd you do this? To me, it's just like, it's, it's not it 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 misses it misses it um like i said before i'm not gonna tell them like oh i don't have this idea in my head like this is what the butthole surfers are because whenever you think that they they change it on you as they should so it's just like it was just a miss i don't think there's any like uh, I don't think this album was done with bad intentions. It no, just, no. Um, just most of it just doesn't fucking land. Like one of the weirdest things is shit like that because that is Beck meets Beefheart, and those two things don't belong together. Apparently not, because it it's not great. It you no, know, I will say the things that I did appreciate. Um, get down is okay. Get down sounds like word up. Oh uh, wait, word up. So, na, 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 tell me what's the oh, word, f- the word up. Oh, the word up. Word. Yeah, definitely kind of has that to Also, it. Corn covered that. We haven't talked about Corn in a while, so Corn covered that. Holy shit, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, in the music video, they have their faces uh, CGI'd on Chihuahua bodies. Uh, wait, that's, wasn't that, where's your head at? Uh, where's your monkeys? Head? It was monkeys. Monkeys. The corn video. They're they're walking around as chihuahuas. Fucking so stupid. Oh cameos. Word up. My God. Uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, that's fucking ridiculous. Uh, Jet fighter. I thought wasn't the worst. Still kind of bad. Mm-hmm. But 
it, there's like some kind of, there's something to grab onto compared to the rest of the album. And honestly, like every song has that really bad trip hoppy electronic rhythm section. The, the only song I, I like on here is uh, the last astronaut. And really it sounds it's, nothing like any butthole surface thing. It doesn't, but I, it's, not, it's not bad. It's not the worst. Yeah. I just think it's a solid trip hop song. So that's, that's the thing. Like every song has that trip hopness to it. And I think if it wasn't for that fucking rhythm section, I would really love uh, Yentel. Mm. It's really spacey, really meditative, kind of pretty, but in a weirdly dark way. And those drums just are so fucking distracted. Like, why are you trying to make this groovy? This is not groovy. Like, yeah. you're making this music is really like soothing and, and really kind of. We, s- we skipped over it, but I think one of the most confusing songs is Dracula from Houston. Like, how do you make a more 90s sounding song? You know what I wrote? I wrote down for that song. I said, what in God's name is this chumba wumba bullshit? They it, made a more 90s song than Pepper. Somehow, they made, it, somehow, <laughs> somehow uh, it, that song completely upset me, completely upset me. And then when I, as soon as I knew that this would be the worst album was track two. Shame of life. What the fuck is happening? It's not good. Put on a little bit of shame of life. Because I want you, everyone listening and watching to remember. Remember the stuff off of Locust Abortion Technician and uh, the first album. And then listen to this. I love the girls and the money and the shame of life. What the fuck, dude? Why? See, my thing is, like, even if it was, like, this, this is, like, a bad Mike Patton song. Yeah, he does have that low kind of uh, speaking time. Yeah, the yeah. the more electronic stuff he's done with, like, Dan the Automator. And he peeping Tom and stuff. Yeah. Which, which is, honestly isn't bad, like. Because that's what did it for me. Like, even in the turn of like the music they're working with it's still it's not good exactly even even if they're playing by those rules it still Mm -hmm. doesn't do much and i i thought like i can't i gotta be just tired because i listened to this when i was like it was pretty late at night i guess i was tired i was like this is fucking horrible and i went back to like the one before this where uh, I liked it, but I was I was still pretty like disappointed compared to the early stuff. I was like, no, this these are good songs compared to bad songs. Mm-hmm. If you're comparing this album to any of the other albums, it's just just objectively badly written, weirdly performed, strange, just strange, strange. The genre choice is just so strange. It's uh, it's funny how a weird band can make <laughs> still make a weird choice. I know it's. This album, it's truly an abomination on a fascinating <laughs> and endlessly creative career. I, any moments I, that I enjoyed in this album, I feel like were accidents. Um, I said Last Astronaut worked for me. Yeah. And then it's not even a great song, but uh, Intelligent Guy is like the heaviest song on that. But that doesn't make it a good song. Yeah. It's just yeah. A lot of this, song. like even with Venus, like I, I noted that I kind of like it, but I didn't. It's just mm. kind of okay compared to the other. Yes. Like, yeah. Compared to a relatively low bar. Yeah. It, bad, bad taste ending the, the career with this album. I could see why they would like to like the thought. Like of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Because really, anything could be better than this. They and want. They need a uh, tribe called Quest. Thank you for your service album. Some yeah, come back, fix it. This walk fix away. It. And but honestly, I with how much good that they've done, I don't even think they need to like. That's true. Those that those early fucking six albums, or whatever. Like they were amazing. It's so creative, so fascinating, uh, and unpredictable that. You got nothing to prove. At this that's point, true. That's true prove. too. Shouldn't have had those uh, egg McMuffins. So it's a bad choice. Oh, crashing, crashing. I mean, th- this was a long one. I'm surprised they took this long to kick in. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> but I say let's uh, let's do a recap now that we're finally at the end. Let me uh, change you, our little back. You've drop real You've quick. ruined me. I've gone from just giving out awards to two albums to now I give awards to four albums yeah you do so for me recap 
personal psychic powerless another man sack uh best hairway to steven least favorite po'd and then worst uh weird revolution for me best personal favorite locust abortion technician it is the one that people usually cite but it is man like as far as experimental album goes, I'm not an experimental music kind of guy. I like things that have experimental elements. I'm a big Swans guy. Most people would be very off put to, to learn that the song The Seer is 30 fucking minutes long. <laughs> and there's plenty of memes about that. Uh, but I generally don't care for things that are straight experimental, except for this album and Disco Volante by Mr. Bungle, which both changed my fucking life. Uh, and then uh, Wars, Weird Revolution. I mean, as much as I love parts of this band and hate parts of this band those two are just like the absolute peaks of both there, there's there's no reason like there's reasons to listen to every other album there's no reason to uh exactly but thank you so much for listening and watching this is a beefy fucking episode i i was more excited to go to this band than than many others for some reason it's like it's a band that is is so both beloved and underrated which is an oxymoron but like I don't hear them talked about very much. It's a uh, cult, cult band, cult band through and through, but uh, a fucking fantastic one. But thank you for yeah, like thank you for listening and watching. And if you want to support us, which I am sure you do after that entire episode, you can follow us on YouTube, fucking Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, whatever. Uh, tell a friend if you want to, you know, spread the word a little bit. We we po- I post clips on Instagram. You can fucking send those to your friends. Or don't send clips to us to your friends. That's probably weird, but. Do follow me on Instagram either way at Pope Jesus Ventura and Alex at Mother Puncture. We will be posting every fucking week who we're currently covering. Uh, so you can be a part. If you uh, want to send us emails, DMs, any thoughts on that artist, we can read it on the pod if it, you know, if it suits everything. Uh, and of course, there just should be a Spotify playlist in the description of wherever you're listening or watching. Also, I feel like because we're fucking up so bad, I think we could announce who we're covering next week if people want to send it in and it would line up. Uh, That is true because we... We used to record these very much in advance. Oh, we used to be responsible. Dude, (laughs) we, we had like a month in advance, but now we have none in advance we we life happens and stuff and we fall behind in it. Uh, but next week we will be covering fucking fugazi 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 yeah so much of my being has been built up to covering fugazi has it so much of myself is in fugazi i am fugazi alex <laughs> uh, it, and the only reason why we're covering it it's not early. We've been. It's, it's episode fifty four right now. It's not early, but I always felt like that they need to be like episode one fifty or something like oh, something okay. something big. But they were finally requested by someone. Uh, so it's Mike, gotta be Mike expert. has very particular ideas about numbers. I am obsessed with visions. Yes. I'm also super autistic. I'm not autistic, <laughs> but I've been told that I have autistic tendencies. Uh, I'm a weird guy. Let's move on from that. But we'll be covering Fugazi. If you want to send us any emails, uh, every album member at gmail.com uh, or DMs to me, Alex or myself, you can do that. It should be a very fun one. But uh until then, thank you so much for all the support and listening and watching and fucking sending us emails and messages and supporting and telling your friends. I know everybody's people have been helping us spread the word and it's very fucking awesome and flattering. But also, I'll talk to uh, an acquaintance here and there and uh, they'll be like, what are you up to? I'm like working on a podcast and they'll be like, sweet, I need to check that out. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I, another uh, interesting development developments of such a douchey way to word that uh, i've been i've been streaming on twitch a lot with a buddy of ours john bowers and and people who like who people who keep following the twitch channel and watch us they now they're fucking podcast listeners and we we got weird crossover audience i love it well when you have weird eclectic interests you're gonna get some crazy eclectic crossover if uh this because i'm gonna plug myself i think i'm gonna make an appearance on the twitch september fourth oh yeah i'm gonna be doing everything i can pretending i'm a superman oh tony hawk we're gonna be streaming tony hawk uh the twitch channel is called guillermo del totoro uh totoro is spelled with two r's instead of one uh 
should really change that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's not, it, yeah. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. <laughs> but until then, uh, I'm taking the reins. I am choosing last of song. Of course here. you are. And you know exactly what song it's going to be. You know exactly what fucking the greatest song in the world. This, everybody, is 22 going oh, on 23 okay. from Locust Abortion Technician. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. See ya.